In our last video, we got our frog game started. We made it so that when we click our go flag, we can move our frog from the right to the left to try to catch the falling bugs from the sky. Right now, nothing happens when we are over it, but in this video, we're going to give ourselves points for capturing a bug, and we're going to make them disappear when they get eaten. So we come back to our code, we're going to want to look at when the dragonfly is touching the frog. So for this we're going to want to code in the dragonfly tab, and we're going to want to check if it's touching the frog. Again, inside the forever tab we're going to always want to be checking to see if we're touching the frog. This is where we have the uh, checking if it's at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to grab another control block for an if-then. We're going to put it underneath the current if-then so that we're checking this too. Now remember, we're sensing if it's touching the frog. So we're going to grab a sensing block. We want touching. I'm going to put that in there. And we want to see if it's touching the frog. When it's touching the frog, we want to add a point value. So to add a point value, we're going to come down here to variables. If you see here, we have an already created my variable. We're not going to want to use that, so we're going to make our own new variable. We can name it here. We're going to name it points. We're going to want to use it for all sprites so that any sprite can access this variable. We can change the point values from any sprite. And click OK. So if you see up here, we've got points. We can also click if you double click on the points, it will change to different styles. You can also, this scroll bar, no. So we're just going to keep it here on points. We're going to now go back to our if statement. So if we're touching the frog, then we're going to want to change the variable, which we're going to want to change here again to points. Change points by one. So it'll add one to points every time we touch a fly. So, let's test it out. So if we move over, notice it is touching, it is giving us a point for, for the entire time that the dragonfly is touching the frog. So obviously we don't want that, we only want one. So in order to fix that, we're going to stop our program so we can come back in because we captured about four or five bugs and we have 107 points. So something there is not right. So what we were going to want to do is as soon as we know that the fly is touching the frog, we're going to want to come into the looks tab. And we're going to want to hide it. So we're going to hide it right away, then change the points by one. So now let's see if that does anything different. Notice it disappeared. And we only got one point. Now, real quick, we're going to address this. We're still at 108 points. Every time we click start, it stays at the point total from before. So we're going to want to make our variable reset every time we start a game. So when we start our game with the flag, we can come over here and set our points variable to zero. So now when we click start, it goes back to zero. And if you notice right now, we don't we don't have a fly falling from the sky. So when we hit it, something went wrong. Never in our code did we make it reappear. So if we come back to the top of our code, when we click start, we're obviously going to want to make sure that it's showing. So we're going to want a show block. We're going to want to put it somewhere in here. So if we start off, we're going to set points to zero. We're going to set Y and X to its positions at the top. So we could show it beforehand, but then it'll be wherever it was. When we start the game, it'll be showing wherever we were before from the last game. If we take this show block, moves everything around, and we put it underneath here, it's not going to show until it's at 
its new location to where it's going to fall, and then it'll immediately go into falling from that location. So now let's see what happens when we click go. It appears and falls. And as soon as we eat it, it disappears for good again. So something still isn't working right. We've got it working so that when we start, it shows it, but then it never comes back. So this is where, in a previous video, I stated we could end up having to have a, a hundred different fly variables if every time it got eaten it disappeared and we could never get it back. But to make this one variable work for the whole game, we're going to have to figure out how to make it keep re-showing up. So we put this show on the set Y and the set X at the beginning. Then it comes into the forever block and it's always going through here until it ends. Notice we don't have a show block in here. So it's pretty simple to find where to put it. It's going to be in the same spot as up here after we set Y, set X, and then we showed. So after it's hidden, we're going to set Y, we're going to set X, and then we're going to show it again. So now when we run, it disappears, gives us one point, and then reappears at the top. So we can keep grabbing our flies one at a time, getting points for every time. So now we're going to add in a sound for our frog when he eats a fly. So we're going to come to the sounds tab right here. Notice we have nothing in it. But down here we can choose our sound. There is a whole bunch of different sounds. You can sample them through here. Let's see. Turn up the volume a little bit so we can hear it. All kinds of different sounds. What we're going to use is the chomp. So I'm going to come up to the search bar and misspell chomp. So chomp we can click on. And then we notice it's here. We can play it. We can make it go faster, slower louder, softer, all of these different options. You can feel free to play around with those as you want. We're just going to keep it at the default chomp sound right there. So if we come back to our code, we're going to be wanting to make this sound whenever the fly touches the frog. So if we come into the if statement that's checking to see if it's touching the frog, we can come to the sounds tab right here. And we're going to use the play sound until done because we don't want it to just play a little bit of it, we want to play the whole thing. We're going to put it in here after it's hidden, because remember we want to hide it first as soon as it touches the frog so that it doesn't keep touching the frog, making it think that we need to do all these things multiple times. That's how we ended up getting a whole bunch of points while a bug was hovering over the frog. So now when we run this and we go eat a frog, uh, eat a frog. When we go, the frog eats a fly, we get a point, and we get a chomp noise. So that's going to be it for this video. We added in uh, the ability to get points for eating a bug. We have our score resetting to zero at the beginning of every game. And we added a chomp sound for when our frog eats a fly to make it a little bit more professional. In our next video, we're going to be adding some obstacles for our frog so that he can't just freely run around eating flies all day. There will be a point where you might lose and the game will end to give an opportunity to try to get better scores each time and see how long you can last.